Hello, Gun Nation. Big Johnson coming at you. All right, we have got a episode here from Bry Knight, and it is the XP22 Scorpion, as you see here. And I have been testing it. I've tested it on the Caltech CP33. I also put it on an AR-15. Ran about probably about 20 rounds through the AR-15. Uh, it was my 16-inch, and but I've ran it quite a bit on the CP33, and I kind of wanted to give my thoughts now. I've got an opinion on it. These are going to be some pros and some cons, so just be aware of that. I believe the price on this on Amazon, and I'll link it below if you want to look at it, I believe it's like $109 or $110, um, something like that. And again, they sent it in for testing and evaluation, so I did not purchase this. But... What it comes with, of course, in the box, and it does, does come with an extra key. You know, we'll get into that in just a minute. But if you've got like a not a 1913, if you've got the thinner uh, key, then it's replaceable and it does come in the box. Comes with some instructions, you know, user manual, all that stuff. Uh, kind of some of their other flashlight options, you know, the tactical flashlights. <clears throat> and it comes with that, and it comes with a charger. Now, this one does have the magnetic charger clicks just clicks right on the front like that at first i thought this might be a laser but it's actually the charging port but that's how it goes on you just need your little brick you know to plug into the wall but there's that so let's just kind of get into it i want to keep this short and sweet it is aluminum uh it's probably like a 60 65 to be honest with you i really don't know it doesn't say a whole bunch it probably does say that um, we'll look through here if that's a big deal to you. And like I said, I will include a link below so you could check it out. But I did want to note this one. This is the 1300 lumen. There's different versions or there's an older version and a newer version. This is their newer version of 1300 lumens. So I think their old one was like 650, but it does not say the Candela. So be aware of that. Uh, if you know, Candela is going to be a hell of a lot of throw, um, and I will let you know, this thing is super bright. Uh, at the end of this video, I'll include like some little outdoor where I was playing around with it when I first got it. And uh, it's pretty damn bright. Both of these little beams or these little lights, they kind of angle like this and they go into one hot spot. So that is kind of cool how they do that. So you don't have like two lights. You have like one um, and it is a pretty bright light with a dominant beam, or excuse me, you know, it's got a hot spot and then it's blacked out around it. So it's, it's pretty damn bright. I mean, it's very actually impressive. I love the low profile of this light. I mean, if you've got, you know, even a standard optic, you know, that's above this, this is good because you don't have to have like a 193 or you know, 223 two, 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 or anything, you know, height, um, you can actually have it low. The only thing is when you put your thumb on the back, your thumb could get in the way of your optic, you know, and block visual uh, for your target. So just be aware of that. Um, you know, and it, you can actually unscrew these. I really don't know why. Because uh, when you unscrew it, I mean, I don't know if you're going to service this, but you can actually unscrew it. And there's the little lens and the bezel. So it does unscrew. I haven't, you know, unscrewed them really. This is the first time. I just knew they were unscrewable because I kind of turned it when I first got it just to see. But, you know, here's the kind of the likes. You know, it's one, it's kind of got a momentary. So you just press it. There's your momentary. Uh, or, excuse me, I'm sorry. You just press it. There's your on. You just press it. And there's your momentary. Or you double click it. And there's your strobe, which I hate strobe. I am not a strobe person at all. I wish you could take the strobe out, but you cannot. There's no way to unprogram the strobe out. Also, you know, you're on your rifle and you're kind of hitting it from the side. You're not, you know, you're not kind of directly here. You're kind of at the side. So what happens, you've got this little guard right here and here on each side, if you can see that very well. You've got a little guard here and a little guard here before you actually get to this. So what will happen is you'll be angled from the side, you know, like with your C-clamp, and you'll go to hit this, and the guard kind of blocks your button a little bit. It's not bad. You can still center it, but if you've got big old thumbs or big old fingers, and, you know, you need, it's almost like it needs a bigger button, I think. 
uh, just for me, this is probably a me problem and not a you problem, but I would prefer a bigger button because I've came over to hit it and I'll try to push it down, you know, like that. And it has to have a really nice detent. And if you try to tap it from the side, this actually kind of blocks the button. So then you have to come over here. So what I've done now is instead of kind of hugging the center, I actually come farther over to this side because I, this is my left hand. And then I push here, you know, I kind of push more towards this side of the button and that's how it works for me. But I have accidentally put it into strobe mode and I hate that because of this little, little block right here. And I understand it so you don't have a negligent discharge of the light. So that's why they have these little guards on here, but it's just not super user friendly, you know, and I'm just being picky. Um, and then also you can kind of see this gap there's a big open gap right there and there's a little spring. It's probably gonna be really hard to see. Let me see if I can put a light on it for you so you can see it, if the light will actually light up in there. See if that works. Yeah, see, you can see the spring now. There's a little spring, so that whole end is open. I don't like that. I wish the end was closed. And the reason being is if you get any kind of debris in here, rocks, mud, anything like that, that could actually block from being able to push because it would be in a bind. So I wish they would have sealed this back up. This is just a personal thing. Um, again, on the rifle, you know, that I was using it on and the PDW, you know, I'm not gonna go and just chunk them in the dirt, but if you did drop it or you had it leaned up against your tailgate and it fell over and some dust or mud, you know, that could get back in there and then it could have a little obstruction so you can't push your button down well. Uh, this one is rechargeable. So the battery's in here. You can't replace the battery. Um, you know, if you're out in the field and it goes dead, you're kind of screwed. You can't throw like a, you know, CR-123 in it and get backing up or another rechargeable battery, you know, like some of the cloud defenses and things like that. So once it's dead, it's dead. I've only charged it one time. It charged really quickly. Um, and I think it says it has quite a bit. It doesn't say exactly a runtime, to be honest with you, that I could see. Uh, but I'm sure it's a pretty good runtime. I haven't had to charge it again, and it's still really bright. To turn it on, you know, you screw this, like you push the button like this to put it on your rail. And then you just tighten accordingly. So when it does have, you know, you can put a nickel in there to tighten it up really well. But when it's on the gun, this is kind of a snag point. I wish it was kind of more inserted, you know, like the stream lights are, but I get it. I mean, you know, it's made in China. It is what it is. Um, I do kind of like this little kind of jumping that they've put on it. You know, like if you want to rest your thumb up here or rest your thumb right here, it won't slide. That's actually kind of cool right there. So you can, you know, rest it here and then come off of it to press or come back on it just to, you know, get your C-clamp. So however you want to do it. But it is pretty robust. I'm actually really surprised for it. And this is a sample. You can see here, sample not for sale. So I don't know if they cherry picked this. I don't know what they did. Uh, they just sent it out for testing. But that's the first time I've ever seen sample not for sale. It's the very first time I've ever seen that with everything I've tested. So don't really know what that means. Um, if this is a cherry picked item and it's going to work perfectly and maybe yours won't, I don't know that. And I purposely did not watch a lot of, I didn't watch any reviews on this uh, when they sent it to me because I wanted to have my own opinion. I wanted to just like, you know, say, okay, here's what I've gotten and here's what I think. But, you know, do I think it's worth it? There's some great features. The low profile is unbelievable. I mean, this is really, really nice. So, and then also if you have like a front A2 post or you have a sight on the front, uh, that's, you know, going to get in the way. This lets the lights kind of go around the site or the A2 post. So that's a really cool having this. Matter of fact, uh, one of my subscribers, Pistol Pete, he actually named this, nicknamed it Wally uh, from the little robot. And it kind of does look like that. Uh, it's kind of cool. But uh, do I like it? Yes, I like it. Do I hate the strobe? Yes, I hate the strobe. You know, the back here is concerning for some people, me and my use not a big deal. Uh, but also, you know, maybe if they close this in or maybe put a guard here so nothing could get in there, that would be even better. And they took away the strobe. 
I hate the strobe. I don't know how many people use the strobe. I mean, you know, like real shooters. I don't know if strobe is used that much. Maybe it is for some other people, but not for me. Uh, and then also, you know, if they put like a laser, you know, maybe in here, like had the two lights and maybe a laser for some people who wanted, um, you know, to have the laser feature, that might be cool. Uh, but then again, you might have to have two buttons, or if you just press the one button, your lights and the laser come on. But then it might have to be programmable, so you could just have the laser when you wanted it, or just the light. Uh, I do have options that are like that as well, from a different brand. But, what do I think about it? I mean, I think it's cool. I like the light a lot. The price, I think it was like $109. If you want a very unique light, I think it's worth the price. Um... If you're like, uh, you know, I don't need a low, low profile light because I think this is a very specific light and it, the application I'm using it for is very specific and this fits a great role for it. Um, it's, it's going to be really up to you. So I'll leave the link below if you're interested. I appreciate you watching. Any questions, comments, opinions? Have you tried this? Let me know below. I'd really love to hear. But thank you, Brian Knight, for sending it in. I appreciate it. And uh, y'all have a great evening. And remember, an unarmed nation is a very weak nation, so we all got to carry on. We got the Bryanite XP. 22 Scorpion. It says it's 1300 lumens. We're just going to give it a check. Here's the light right here. Put the little dual heads on it. Damn thing is bright. Pretty damn bright. We've got the Brynite XP-22 Scorpion. You have to pardon the mess. I'm doing some yard work. Wow. Thing is bright. It says it's 1,300 lumens.